Hello and welcome to the C-Suite Business Show, where we talk about some of the most exciting developments in new business generation, from our own consultancy experience to the latest strategies and technologies available to you, the C-Suite Business Community. And I'm your host, Nigel May. Well, welcome to the podcast. And this is a new series that we're starting, which is, as you can see from the name, is the, the C-Suite Business Show. Joining me is Liz. Hello. And we are going to have a chat and talk about the changes that we've been making within the business and how it, it, it mirrors, it should mirror what other businesses are doing as well. Now, the point of this is that um, back in 2018, we started on a new um, a new direction that was based upon producing content doesn't sound very unusual but when you look at um, the changes that are happening more recently in businesses um, you can you'll, you'll understand why our version of content appears to be vastly different to the content that other people are producing I'll come on to that in a minute. But the, the point of this is that um, we are, we, we, we've, we've realigned ourselves. We were, we were putting out our information and content to people in general and realised that it's not for everybody. And the way that I view and talk about business, um, I think I would probably upset most employees anyway um, because at the end of the day, most people are employees. There's only a handful of people on the C-suite um, and therefore the, the, the bulk of the people out there are employees. That's a fact. So what's this point? What's the, what's the point? What's the point of the, the new series? Well, it, it's about the generation of new business and it's something that will be close to every single company's heart. But there's a problem. There's a massive problem. And that is the, um, the people that are, are supposed to be driving this, the, the marketing people, are failing. And mm. there's, no, there's no simple way, of, easy way of, 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 of easing anyone into this. They are failing. They've been failing for quite a long time. And the information that we see and read backs it up. I mean, mm. completely. Yeah, I mean, we've spent probably, well, while we've been in lockdown, we've had a lot of opportunity to read stuff and talk about stuff. Um, and we do spend a lot of time, like our mornings are spent having those coffee chats. And, and this is really probably what this has come out of, these coffee conversations in the morning where we've been kind of talking about business and where business is going, the things that we've read, the things that we've observed out there in the marketplace. Yeah. And um, and I think what we've we've realised is that there is on the one hand you've got um, some big organisations like Forrester and Gartner and McKinsey and people like that you know organisations like that that are highly respected particularly in the technology um, in the technology arena yeah. their opinions are highly valued um, and they've been talking about. Um, how prospects and customers want to self-educate. And the downside of the self-education for the prospect's point of view is that there is a dearth of information available. There is, a, there is so little um, information and content out there for the prospect to educate themselves that they, um, they have to resort to speaking to a salesperson and that's not necessarily what a prospect wants to do and I think in the last two years while we've been in a lockdown situation or where you can't speak to people in the office and so on prospects have had a lot more time to be able to evaluate the products that they want to buy and I think a lot of it it shows that there is actually there is so little content out yeah. there and it, and it, it actually is in contradiction to what Gartner and McKinsey and Forrester are saying that, you know, prospects do want to self-educate. They do want to go in the, on that journey themselves before they even engage a company. Yeah. I mean, you, 
Gartner put out that it was like 83% of prospects want to um, evaluate what they're planning to buy by themselves before they'll even speak to a, a salesperson. So you think, okay, well, how are they doing that? Well, through effort, because mm. they have to pick up um, tidbits from um, from different websites to learn about what, what is going on mm. because the, the common... What's the word? The, the common ideology is, well, we've got salespeople for that. Mm. We, you know, if you want to learn about our product, that's what we've got a salesperson for. Yeah. And you go, <laughs> yeah, but that was in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. Here we are, 2022, and we've got a situation. Um, you've got a situation now that the, the lockdown was like a catalyst and it, it, it helped people realise, wait a second, I can find out about this stuff that I want. I can read, listen and watch whatever I want without interruption, without someone breathing down my neck saying, why are you looking at that video? No, one, no one's going to challenge them. And so you've got, you've got businesses that are stuck in this, this dated um, mentality that says, if you want to learn about our product, we'll send us, you, you can call us and we'll send a salesman in. And businesses are failing because of that. Plus, if we go back to what the, the salespeople did, they, they cold called. Yeah. And we talked about this before. I mean, anybody that's listened to these previous podcasts or read anything on our website, one of the, the primary things that we advocate against is marketing automation. And you go, oh, how can you say that? Surely you don't know what you're talking about. I've been doing this 35 years. I know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm. People have... Um, have blindly gone down this path of buying marketing automation software because the company's been advised to do it. So here you've got a CEO who, his, his job, my opinion, his job, your job, <laughs> is to corral the right people, is to get the right people around you. And... You know, whether you're Jack Welch or, 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 or anybody, anyone else out there the, of the, the, the really well-known leaders, business leaders, the emphasis is on the leading. And a leader can only lead if he's been given the right data and information. So the people that are giving them the data and, inf and information are sales and marketing people. And, it's, yeah. and the sales and marketing people say, oh, um, you need to get our marketing automation because what what it'll do, you know, you can you do, we do a pay per click, we 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 do a landing page, and and um, they'll give us their details, and then we can hand that over as a marketing qualified lead to sales, and sales go cheers, thanks very much, and we'll go and ring them up and say, I hear you want to buy some, some one of our or look at our product, and guess what, it doesn't work. B two B, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about B two C. B two B doesn't work because. The, the customer doesn't want to give their, their details away. Nobody does. Everybody knows it. Mm. I mean, absolutely everybody knows nobody wants to give out their details. Nobody wants to be cold called. It's a 400 to one shot to find someone that wants to buy something. Yet this is being rammed down the throats of the CEOs because everybody in marketing is saying, we, we've got to have it. There's no other method. Is there? Nobody's come up with a, with a better idea. And you think, well, yeah, it just sounds like I'm bitching about something. But I'm not. Mm. So in the past two weeks, I've read Gartner is saying traditional sales and marketing doesn't work. It needs to be re-evaluated. Re it's it just doesn't work. Nobody's quite sure what it should look like, but it doesn't work. Mm. I read yesterday on Forbes magazine that actually um, the tenure with one person was nine months for a CMO. I've been going. I've been banging on about it saying it's eighteen months because. I've, I've read it on the internet. It's, it's on our website. I can't, I can't rattle it off because I'm not looking at my screen. But there were four or five articles that I've read that said 18 months. Seth Godin last year said it was 18 months. Yeah. And now someone said it was nine months. So this is the tenure of a CMO. And it's like, well, why would you keep sacking a CMO? It's because they're not performing. They mm -hmm. pitch up. They go, oh, I'm going I'm to set your world alight. And they go, well, OK. They take them on, employ them. Three months into the job, they're, they're, they're setting up their new strategy. Twelve months to execute it, they fail. Three months to find a new job. 
and that's happening again and again and again. It's getting shorter and shorter. If the average is 18 months, yeah. then naturally there are some that are shorter. Some yeah. are going to be longer. Yeah. But at, at the end of the day, there, there is a, a, a problem out there and nobody knows how to address it. The one I read yesterday was, um, was saying, well, actually, and the CEOs listening to this are going to love this one, actually it's your fault because you don't know how to, how to recruit them. You don't, have to, you don't know how to take them on, how to re employ CMOs. You don't know how to give them a proper brief. You don't know, yada, yada, yada. It's like, wait a second. A CEO, you either develop the product, started the business, or you've been employed by a private equity company or whatever to run it. The CMO's in place. When are they going to take some responsibility for this? I mean, this, yeah, this is I what really does my head in. It's all about accountability. I mean... It, you know, a CEO won't know the ins and outs of the finances. He, he wants to know the high-level stuff. He doesn't want to know the data. He doesn't need to know. That's 100%. what the CFO's there for. Yeah. Um, the chief information officer, if you've got one, knows all about how the software works, how it all fits together. You know, but, and he'll deliver high-level stuff to the, um, to the CEO. But why should the CEO know everything about marketing? Because he probably he's, he doesn't know everything about finance unless he's an accountant. He doesn't know everything about software unless he was a, a software developer. Yeah. You know, he might have been in sales. That, that's fairly high probability. That was probably some while ago anyway, but, but nevertheless. But I do think, you know, there's, there's no accountability. It's, you know, you talked about marketing automation before. And um, I think... Maybe what C CEOs don't know, and maybe CMOs don't know this either, which would be a frightening thought, but you gate, you gate a piece of content and it's invisible to Google. You can't be found. You're hiding your content. So whilst you're being told, on the one hand, marketing automation is the way forward because we can gather people's email addresses and that's what we need. We want to be able to contact people, so we want to get that information. But on the other hand, Google can't see who you are and can't see what you've got out there. Yeah. So Google can't even evaluate whether that piece of content that you've got on your website is worth reading because that's what Google do. Yeah. We've got some content on our website that was on page one of Google within two or three hours because Google looked at it, it evaluated it and said, yeah, this is a great piece of content because it follows these rules. I can see it, you know, and it's got bullets and numbering and and all the components of a good piece of content. Yeah. You know, it's the right length, it's the it's read it's um the readability is is good. But if you hide your content behind a, a form, Google doesn't know whether it's a decent piece of content or not. So you don't even have a if you like, an impartial view of your content. Because the person that's written it might say, well, it's a great piece of, you know, my blog was great. Or my white paper was great. I mean, I've read, I've downloaded a piece of, I was interested in something, I think it was um, some accountancy package. And I thought, oh, well, that, that looks kind of interesting. I downloaded it. And I had to give up my email address and my telephone number. And when I downloaded it, I realised it was a Word document, first of all. Word? He puts Word on the internet. Um, but also, it was two pages. It had no pictures in it. It was just two pages, double line spacing. On, on, and it was like, I can't believe I have offered up my email address and my, to get this worthless piece of content. And there are a lot of people out there that do this. I mean, statistically, I, I looked at another thing. It was about in the technology industry where technicians, people people that were like software developers, and people, they wanted a piece of information, but they, they, they had to give their email address up. They put their email address in, they downloaded the content, the content was useless. They unsubscribed immediately. Now, the thing is what you probably don't appreciate from a CEO's perspective. You might go, yeah, we've got loads of people have downloaded, but what you don't appreciate is the number of people that will unsubscribe from you because your content is actually very poor and not what they're looking for and they've had to surrender personal details. 
but they will unsubscribe and they'll probably never come back to you again. This is it. I mean, the whole thing about content. Um, people have been going on about content for a long time. But the trouble is... <coughs> excuse me. The trouble is, is that the people in marketing don't know what good content looks like. That's the fundamental problem. Mm. And the, it, what adds to the problem is that marketing people... I mean, my view is that people kind of gravitate towards marketing not out of a strategic career path. They fall into it. Most people fall into marketing. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll define this. On, on going back some years, you had an art department. So the art department had the creatives in it. Mm. Didn't matter whether it was film or graphic design or copy or writing or anything. They were the people that were the create the genuine creatives. Now we've got this. Then now we've got this middle ground which is called marketing, and these are techies, techie wannabes, because they're manipulating and looking to attempt to construct the martech and tech stacks to make those work. And then at the other end, you've got salespeople. So now your new business revenue, you know, going back some years, you had the the creatives, then you had marketing, then you had sales. The creatives don't exist anymore Mm. in B2B, in B2B. So now it's all merged into one. It's called marketing. So you you don't get a a large graphic design team. In most companies, you don't get a large graphics team, a large filming team. It doesn't happen. And so the people that are driving marketing are admin. Mm. And so... Their role as admin, they don't know or really care about selling. Why should they? You've got salespeople for that. Yeah. So their role is to provide these um, marketing qualified leads. Mm. And people have gone on for the past probably seven, eight, nine, ten years about the friction between sales and marketing. And it's one of the things I've written about is that both of them want to maintain the status quo. Mm. You go, well, why would you say that? Surely they want business to come in. Oh, they do. Oh, they do want business to come in, but not at their expense. And that's where we come in. I mean, this is this is why it's a C-suite, a C-suite business show, because what we're saying is that you can do away with most of them mm. and people will be listening to this going, really? What, what are you saying? If you, if a business understands what the customer actually wants, it changes everything. I mean, massively, massively changes everything. Yeah. You think, okay, let's let's just walk a quickly. I'm not going to go through all of it because it's all on our website, and there are videos and podcasts and downloads, um, and and even live streams about this. But the the point is, is that the customer wants to be educated, the yeah. prospect wants to be educated, so. They do their, their, their searching the internet to find information where they can self-educate. Mm. If they find it, they like it, and they like it, they'll, they'll start to connect with you. Mm. But the problem is that to connect with those people outbound, it takes something like um, seven to ten touches for them to recognise your brand. Once they've recognised it, but but in order for them to recognise it, they've got to see your information. Mm. But sending information out, one and three get through, which means you've got to send out 30 things. They've got to be be able to visualise and see 30 things. So in order to do that, that's going to take six or seven months Mm. to send out or to enable somebody to visualise 30-odd things that you've got. Mm. Most businesses throw the towel in after three or four. So, so that's, the, that's the first fundamental problem. Yeah. And secondly, if they're looking for content, they want to be educated. If they get educated, they'll come back. They know who you are. They know what you do. But if you're not prepared to show them how to use your product or how, to, how your product is going to benefit them without f- chucking a salesman in front of them, mm. they'll walk away. Why yeah. should they? And that's and that's the fundamental problem. So the only the only path to rectifying this is to produce everything that's necessary and just 
allow people to see it. Yeah. And and and, and people and people are going, oh oh, can't do that. But yeah. the, 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 here's the here's the kicker. If you produce the content, make it freely available, videos, downloads, podcast, live stream, and so on and so on. Allow people to come and see you, and I'll come on to get access in a total addressable market in a minute. But if you make everything available, you become attractive. Yeah. And if you don't do it, you ain't attractive. Mm, so I people think, can't find you. Yeah, I think that there is a statistic that we came across that millennials will go through the whole process from start to finish and will readily buy something worth but it was something like a hundred thousand a hundred grand plus a hundred grand plus and do it all self-serve that's pretty that's really quite startling that that millennials will do that it's because they they've grown up through that and more yeah. and more of those you know that those millennials are now becoming buyers and influencers in businesses yeah i, mean, I jotted something down the other day actually when we were having coffee um you know, prospects want to self-serve and, and self-educate yeah. themselves. Um, but companies employ salespeople because you want them to sell the product. Yeah. Um, and so you, you don't produce the content because your objective is always to sell, not to serve. Yeah. And so by having a mindset of selling and not serving... It means that your customers or your your potential customers don't have access to you in a way that they want to have access to you because you're um, you're focusing on the sale of the product, not serving the prospect yeah. and serving the customer. And if that comes across loud and clear that you don't care about them because you're not producing the content that they need, then why should they? place their business with you because you're not showing that you care about them i, I did a thing i did i wrote something the other day that was about um bpm and customer experience so with bpm business process management and the software that you can get from pega appian and um Bizagi and service now and so on with these different companies the focus is on widgets but i call them widgets mm. you know getting something to happen getting the, the a process to happen that is yep. functional whether it's robotics whether it's manufacturing and so on and so on so everybody wants the kudos of going oh, i made it happen and we've saved some money on it but the the the, the part the part that that gets um forgotten about i think is sales and marketing transformation not digital transformation f with bpm but sales and marketing transformation because that's the customer experience. Mm. But the customer experience starts at the prospect point. Mm. Their experience as a customer starts when they are prospects. Yeah. And if the experience that they encounter is one of there ain't no content, they're forced to fill out a form, they're pestered by salespeople, you're shooting yourself in the foot straight away. Before yeah. you even get into first base, yeah, and then even if if they, if they do manage to sell to you, their their previous prior experience is not good enough for them to remain loyal. Yeah, so someone else comes along and says, "We've got this this shiny thing here, I and mean, this is how we look after you." you go, oh, do you, do you know what? I'll go with you because you look after you look after your customers. Yeah, so you're instantly losing them. So the 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 customer experience process needs to start at that point which is serving the customer yeah so if you can demonstrate that you are intent on educating them you're intent on helping them yeah there was this whole networking thing about um about serving people and and helping them first before you help you all this kind of stuff and and, and it, it rings true to an extent but but looking at what businesses are doing I believe, and this is the whole point of this C-suite show, the C-suite are being misled by people on the, on, on the, on, at the grassroots, at the ground level. Mm. They're being misled by them because if, if you, if, if one were to adopt our strategies, all of which are readable and accessible online because we, had, we don't want your email address because you can find out everything, you would restructure everything, make everything available, completely self-serve, allow the prospects to self-serve. And if they want to buy from you, allow them to do it online or, or get the salesperson involved at the last mile, mm. for the last mile. 
because and if they if they if they want to chat if they want to talk to someone put someone who absolutely knows exactly what they're talking about mm. if someone rings up and make it easy for them to ring up make them easy to, to get onto chat make it easy to get responded to quickly and and i see businesses again and again and again time and time again just missing a trick here if we were saying, oh, and, and, and thanks for listening to this, this podcast, and here's, this, here's, here's our new software we just bought out. You go, oh, I've got, I've got your number. There is no software. No. There is no cost. And if you, if you, if you follow this through, the, the cost of what we're saying, and bearing in mind, I'm saying this based upon 35 years in business, so I'm not saying, oh, let's go and be, let's act as advocate for marketing or advocate for sales. No, absolutely not. The point is, is advocate for, for the C-suite, yeah, because I have seen people get mugged, basically, yeah. that they have been rolled over because of the um, little sensitivities of people that want the football tables and, and, and basketball hoops and free beer on a Friday giving it the big one about marketing and this is what you <laughs> on that point so I'm, I'm watching this this youtube thing this morning and of course i i i, I want to keep abreast of stuff and it's about it said something like um b2b how to get b2b marketing b2b leads for sat for b2b SaaS products and it had like like two and a half thousand or three thousand people watch it and i'm thinking well okay i'll so i started it then I put it onto one and a half times playback, so I'm not listening to all the nonsense, and I'm skipping ahead. And it says, post up a message on LinkedIn once a week. Once a week on LinkedIn. Then do some webinars, and then <laughs> send them a letter. By FedEx, but send them a letter. Got 90% chance of it, being, of it being opened. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, you would open a FedEx letter and then bin it straight away in disgust. But this is what people are putting out right now. This is like this morning. Mm. And it's th these people have not got a clue. I mean, we talked about this before. Um, one morning we were talking about how, how things have changed since March 2020. Um, and everybody, you know, you, you've got to admit that, you know, March 2020 was so unexpected. It came right out of left field, lockdown people not working in the office and so on and so on. And it was a complete shock to the system. Yeah. Uh, and everybody was in the same boat. It wasn't like it, it was for some people and not for others. Everybody was in the same boat. And a lot of businesses, sadly, didn't survive. Yeah. And there were some businesses that really gained out of it. You know, they were able to... Not like Amazon. Pivot. <laughs> yeah, and Zoom. Um, but they were able to pivot and did really, really well out of it, which is, you know... There are always going to be winners and losers. But what we talked about was how, you know, the strategy that you would have had for your marketing pre-March 2020 is not the strategy that's going to take you from March 22 and beyond. It has to be, it has to be different because yeah. now people, whether we like it or not and whether you... I mean, a lot of people listening to this will say, yeah, we've, we've either, we've, we're all completely home working or people want hybrid. If we don't offer hybrid working, we can't employ people. This is a reality because people want to work from yeah, home. Yeah. But the point is that people working from home is that they're not contactable in the office like they used to be. So yeah. that whole strategy of even if, you know, somebody fills a form in, and I know this from experience, they fill a form in on a website and even probably more so now, they put the office number on that form. And if they put the office number up that, on that form, they don't want you calling them because they know yeah. that they are not in the office and so you can't reach them. You might reach them by email, but they can easily press delete. They're not bothered about that. No. But they don't want to be badgered with phone calls. And I think if you... But also what I think has come out of, um, of this lockdown experience is that because people are working at home, people now have ac accessibility or access to more media. You yeah. know, they can watch a video, they can listen to a podcast, they can read an article, whereas if they were sitting in the office, they wouldn't put a podcast on. No. You know, they wouldn't be watching a video because somebody would be like, over their shot, what, what you're watching, cat videos, dog well, videos. That's, well, that's, that's why we've got this the whole thing about live streaming. 
Yeah. I mean, here's the money shot. Yeah. I mean, this really is the money shot. Um, you have a, everybody has a total addressable market. If you don't know what it is, you shouldn't be in business. So you have a total addressable market. You have different sizes of businesses within the UK. There are just under 6 million up to um, 10 employees, 212 up to 50, um, 36,000 up to 250, and above is 8,000, something like that. So off those sizes of businesses, you've got a total addressable market. And so, you, and you already know how many there are because you can get a database to, to, to yeah. identify it. So it's really easy. So every company in the world wants to be able to reach their total addressable market, and they can't because mm. they don't know how to. That's it. It's the only reason. Nobody, because nobody in sales knows how to do it because they don't know the technologies and what what's available attainable, and nobody in marketing. No, it's because it's not really their job. They, 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 they've got to do a bit of pay-per-click here and there to reach out, but that's it. So basically, they're both sides fail. And the people that suffer the most, people at the top, people on the C-suite, it's your job. You failed, you're fired. So here it is. Here's, here's, here it is, the, the, the most important methodology to reach your total addressable market by the database and email them and get them to watch your live stream. I mean, I'm not I'm not advocating just pick up your iPhone and go live, but not far from it. Mm. And so if you email your total addressable market once a week and say, join us anonymously on our live stream. And we, this week we're going to be talking about X. If only 1%, and, we, and everybody in sales knows this, only about 1% of your total addressable market are looking to buy your product this week. Might change next week. Mm. But on average, circa 1% of your total addressable market are actually in the market for your type of product, whatever it is. Yeah. So therefore, if there's... 50,000 or, tw you know, 10,000, 10, whatever, how many thousands you want. Even if you had a 1,000, 1%, 10 people. Yeah. So imagine if your total addressable market is, is 1,000 people and you email them all and a handful of people watch you, the work that's gone into that that one person can do would be able to reach more than your entire telesales operation. Yeah. Period. Absolute fact. Because trying to reach someone by telephone is a 400 to 1 shot. Mm. And that's, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, we can, we can sit here all day long, talk about statistics. Um, we can, you know, of the businesses that start up, 30% fail in the first year, 50% second year, 70% by the third year, 10, uh, and 91% and by the 10th year. So 90 plus 91 percent of all businesses fail within 10 years, right? Okay, and that's from the FT. Mm. Half a million businesses start every year, and half a million businesses fail every year. And some people go, "Oh, we've been going longer than that. Now we've, we're, we're great." And you go, "Okay, what about if you've got finance, if you, as an investment?" Mm. So 40 percent of all businesses that get investment fail. So that they didn't give a, t a time scale on that. So that means any of them. Anyone that's got investment can fail at any time. 70% of those businesses that receive investment don't achieve the targets that they set for themselves. And something like 90-odd percent of businesses that receive investment don't make any money or create an ROI for the investors. Mm. And the list goes on and on and on and on. And some people can say, well, it's just churn. And it's like, you've got to be mad. You've got to be mad to go into business. I mean, our, our way of, 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 of recommending marketing, and if, we, and if we were being precious about it, we wouldn't be doing this. No. Yeah, we wouldn't have just said, you've got to, go, you've got to start live streaming. It, and, and, and get anybody to do the figures. Go on our website and get the figures. 
it costs pennies. Absolute. You can stream for free on Facebook, LinkedIn, and there's one other. YouTube. YouTube, yeah. I knew that. So for, on, you can stream for free. So think about the logic of this. You've emailed 10,000 people, just, and I know this, I, I looked at this the other day just to look at the cheapest. Say, say, forget marketing automation, bin it. You could completely bin your automation costs, your, your SaaS costs for marketing automation. Using something like, I don't know, MailChimp, cheap, cheap. You can send out 10,000 emails 12 times a month for 100 quid. Not that you would, because you'd only do it once a week. So 10,000 emails once a week for 100 quid mm. to say, come and watch our free anonymous live show. Ask us any questions. We'll answer them anonymously online, live, in front of our audience. Or you can chat with us privately. It's up to you. You cannot beat that. Nobody, nobody can touch it. No. And then the second part of it is if you do have a lot of people following you on on social, whatever it is, um, came across a company the other day, they've got 50,000 people following them, following their company name on, on LinkedIn, but they don't do anything with it. Mm. They do nothing. So anyway, say, say you've got 50,000, even 5,000 people following you. You can put adverts out that you create in-house so you're not, these, these are not pay-per-click adverts. These are just adverts. So you create a meme or a graphic or whatever and post it every day. And we recommend you do four adverts every day and post them every day for a month. So create 120 adverts in total, post them automatically every day. Use a platform like SmarterQ so it does it automatically for you. Post them every day so and, and the adverts promote your content. Not mm. to forget the product. The product's in there. Your call to action's in there. Tell them to go and buy it. They know what they're looking for. Mm. And so you say, we've got this content, that content, this podcast, that video, that live stream, this download. And you advertise that. And then if you still haven't got enough people, in terms of your, 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 um, your viewers, you could then take that database that you've got of your 10,000 in your total addressable market and upload that to LinkedIn and set up a pay-per-click campaign so it puts your banner advert in front of those email addresses that you're already emailing anyway. Mm. So the, the whole thing about humongous cost for pay-per-click via Google, for B2B this is, mm. nonsense. doesn't work. And not, But also it doesn't work because it's all that content is hidden. So you're, you're producing a... You're doing a pay-per-click campaign, but Google doesn't know whether what you're sending them to is good, bad, or indifferent. It's, I mean, it's, then, actually, then, it's the, actually insanity. Yeah, it's because, genuine because insanity. those costs easily and quickly ramp up. But I think if you broke it down and said, what, what was the, you know, how much business did we actually get from Google? Well, Forrester said... Um, a while ago now, a few years ago, less than 1% of people that will click and click through and, and go through that process, that so-called funnel process, yeah. actually become revenue-paying customers. Yeah. Less than 1%. So for us to say less than 1%, McKinsey have got another comment. Um, uh, Gartner have got another load of statistics. Um it, it, it's all it, it's it's a bit like um caveat it's definitely caveat mTOR yeah buyer beware but in this case it's business business beware because all the information's out there but you that you're choosing either choosing not to read it or people know about it but they don't say anything yeah. oh, here's, here's a here's a classic to me this is an absolute classic you know you can't knock hubspot really i mean I think guy this name's Dharma Shah and um, Brian Halligan. Fair play. Fair play to them. Done a great job. Sold loads of software. So why are they getting involved in podcasts? I mean, I'm the only cynical one going, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> you know, you, you, you've got this company that gone automation, 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 automation. 
big time, big, big time. And of course, lest, lest we forget, the people that sell it get a kickback. Not yep. just directly from HubSpot, but they that so so you've got this company that get that that agree to buy marketing automation from some marketing company somewhere or other. The marketing company getting commission on a monthly basis for that subscription. Yeah. Same same for Marketo, same for Pardot, I think. Um, same for Eliqua. All of them. So you think you're being given or recommended a, an impartial bit of advice, yet why a HubSpot going down a path? of investing in podcasts. Now, bearing in mind, Spotify dumped half a billion dollars into podcasting. They've now bought Anchor. You've got all these different players, podcast, podcast, podcast. Of course we're doing it, but we, we were doing it last year hmm. and the year before. But at the end of the day, why would a, a marketing automation platform invest in podcasts? It's because it's the content. Yeah. But they're not saying promote the content. They're not saying advertise the content because what, what, do you, what do you need marketing automation platform for? Because at the end of the day, what you've got to do, you're, 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 they rather, are trying to get you to keep hiding your content and keep paying pay-per-click. And let's be cynical again. So big tech, martech, play together and get you to do your marketing and you maintain your income per person per annum at circa 100 grand per person per annum sounds like a bit of a scam to me so mm. if you look at the if you look at the figures you go to the british institute of statistics and it says if you've got about 10 people in your company it's about 80 grand if you've got a hundred if you've got 50 people 50 plus people in your company you're looking about a hundred and 60 grand give or take so that's between less than a million and up to five million so above five million you're going to do there or thereabouts you might do a bit more google do 1.5 million per person per annum mm. I, I, I hazard to think how much the, the figure is now for apple but the three trillion that they're valued at is different to how much the turnover is per person per annum nevertheless if you're being told pay per click that tells someone to click on an advert, a banner advert, to a landing page to then fill out a form to get some details that then becomes a, a lead. The friction you've got is ridiculous. So first friction, first level of friction, have you got enough money? Yeah? Yeah. To, to bid, to, to actually get your advert on the front page. Mm -hmm. So that's the first element of friction. The second ele element of friction, what's your copywriting skills like? Are they any good? To actually get that person to click on your banner and did you split test it or abc split test it with three alternatives that's the next frictions the third element of friction landing page is it any good mm. who wrote it what's on it does it follow all the, the the prerequisites of above the fold and bullets and and logos and have you got a video on it and so on and so on and then how much information are you asking for we all know that people, you know, just asking just for an email is difficult enough. The, but the, the 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 numbers of people that give you their first name, last name, title, oh, well, number, I mean, company some of name, them are like a gets, shopping list, aren't they? less and less and less and less and less. Yeah. And that's because the person that flogged you the, um, the marketing automation software didn't tell you about cascading forms. Mm. So you can ask them for, for bits and pieces as you go down, if you're going to do that. But then that's your next bit of friction. How much information you want information how much information do you want yeah. and then the final bit of friction is what's the content like is it any good who told you it was any good yeah and that's what that's that's the kicker and because we, i've always said you know google are the the, the preeminent um custodian almost of content because they're the ones that say is it any good well they're the arbiter aren't they, 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 arbiter. they that was that, the word. That was so the word. they actually they look at your content and they they just assess it like we talked about before has it got all of those necessary components that say this is a good piece of content they're not they're looking at they're they not can, looking at the actual words that are written they're looking at the actual construction of the page but they but they can see the grammar because oh, you, can, okay. you can do that um the the, the flash kincaid 
thing, I think it's called Flash oh, yeah, Kincaid, you can do it on within Word, within can't Word it? that tells you how readable it is. And yeah. it's got to be written for a 12 year old. Yeah. It's got to be straightforward, unless it's a, a proper, full on technical document. It's got yeah. to be written for a 12 year old. And so they can see does it, is it well written or easily written? Mm. Bullets, bullet points, number, number lists, um, H1, H2, H3 headings pictures, graphics, um, graphs, embedded videos, and so on and so on and so on. Links. Has it got inbound links? Has it got outbound links to whatever? It knows if it's a decent piece of content. Mm. And so you've got all of that. And then you go, and if you've... Because it's being hidden with most companies, you never know if it's written properly or well enough anyway. Mm. And the other side is, I mean, I, I read, I read, OK, so a 256-page document put out by um, a very, very large ABM company, because I don't know whether I should say the name or not. I don't think I should. But very, very, very large, very, very well-known ABM company who the... CMO used to work for a previous very, very, very large marketing automation platform, and now they sell ABM. And on page 10, this particular person who's well known on LinkedIn said, I know that um, none of us like giving our details out. Most of all me, I hate giving out my details. And if someone tries to contact me cold, I'll give them an absolute dressing down and give them a stick because of them asking me for my details. Because we want to be anonymous. Everybody wants to be anonymous. Anyway, that said, what we've got is we've got some really clever little bits of software that can do a reverse IP lookup so you can actually nail them. And stalk and, them. And stalk them and find out who they are. It's like, give me a break. So this is what it... So they know people don't want it. They know people don't want to be treated like that and back in the day a long time ago when I first started selling there was a word that had already become outdated which was being a, a prospect being called a mark and I think in in like hustling and and theft and pickpocketing you had marks there was a tv program wasn't there called hustle and they used to refer to their yeah there were marks. Targets as marks. So they're called marks. Now, if you now now translate that and put that into our current way of selling, they are called marks. They are people to be nailed. But wait a second, that makes me a mark. That makes you a mark. That makes you, the listener, a mark. We're all marks. So what, suddenly we become a different species because we might want to buy something. We are there to be stitched up. We're there to be screwed over. You go, oh, Heaven forfend, surely they would. They don't mean that. Well, take it out of your downloadable document then. And don't, you don't, you, they haven't inferred it. They've absolutely said it. You do, you do a list. You go onto Google, do a reverse IP lookup. And there is a handful of companies, and that's exactly what they do. So all these people that have been filling out their, your, you know, they, they give you the name, address, and details. By using the reverse IP lookup, your information goes into a data lake. What did um, Cambridge Analytica get spanked for? Because of all the data that they had, because they'd harvest all this data. Facebook had harvested it, harvested it and everything went to pot. Mm. But it's being used, oh, it's all legitimate within B2B. So reverse IP lookup says, we know it's XYZ company in, on, on the high street. They're a big B2B company. Right, now next stage, get into LinkedIn. Check them out. Who's the people, who are the players in LinkedIn? Right, now we know that they're looking at... So we, we can find who the CMO is, the CEO, the CFO, the COO, the, C, you know, the CTO and everyone else. So we can find out the complete C-suite simply because, by doing a reverse IP lookup and knowing the name of the company. And if your ISDN pipe, well, not ISDN, if your fibre optic pipe um, that's got your... that, that, that uses... Um, that connects you to the internet, if that's been named, they know exactly who you are straight away. So you're screwed. <laughs> and it's it's like, wait a second. And that's what's happening with everyone. And so you think, well, go down an ABM route. Yeah. Because then we can we can pitch to everybody I just, that's I just think it's so I don't know, there's something about it that make for me, um I just think it's just so unethical 
that, you know, me as a browser, me as a put myself in the buyer's shoes, I want to browse um, privately. I don't want anybody knowing what I'm looking at um, because I want the opportunity to be able to... Apple, you, you, you're invisible. Everyone's getting upset with Apple because they go, "Oh, we could, we could, we're going to, we're going to hide you. We're going to maintain your privacy." And everyone's going, oh, but, 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 but we, we, we don't want to do that. We, we, we want to chuck cookies on everyone and, and, and be, be able to, to identify them and do." Really? But I, I do think, though, that you want to be able. You know, one wants to be able to browse in private, and when I'm ready, then I'll, I'll reach out and make contact. But not before. I don't. I. I really object to it. And I used to be in sales. You know, I used to make phone calls. I was a person. You know, I know what it's like. Yeah. And, but I also know what it's like being on the other side of it. And I also, you know, the companies that do ring you up and say, oh, you were looking at our website. <laughs> and I, and, it, and what's your... Well, it's like, yeah, I was. Well, what were you looking for? Well, actually, I, I don't really business. want to... Dis- yeah, it's none of your... But I actually... I don't want to discuss it with you. Or I might say, well, actually, I didn't see what I wanted there. And I don't actually want to engage in conversation, but I do feel it's it's unethical, it's intrusive. And I just genuinely don't think that's the way to do business. I think the way to do business is to show your customers that you care. And the way to show that you care is by producing the content that they need to make a decision. Because ultimately, as a buyer, and I think the more... The more expensive your offering is, if you want to put it like this, or the more um, complex the sale complex in a way. the sale is, the the prospect wants to self educate. Yeah. What they don't want to do is they don't want to waste their time with products that are not fit for their purpose. Because the chances are, what you know, if you sell a, a piece of software, you're going to have competition in your market in your space. But it's likely that your software does something that somebody else's software doesn't do. So there might be only one or two players that do something specific for that prospect. So what the prospect wants to do is the prospect wants to eliminate all the people that that don't provide that, um, that, yeah. that don't provide that. And I think because, you know, we both of us have been in that situation where... It's easy to blag. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that as a software provider. Oh yeah, yeah. We can do. We can write that into our software. No, I don't want you to write it into the software. I want to know that it's done and it's available to me right now. Yeah. So I, I just think prospects. We we need to be treating our prospects with respect that they actually have a degree of in, intelligence. <laughs> well, if we we you me listener we three. Ah, the prospect. Yeah. We're bright enough to go, well, I want to listen to a podcast. I want to see this. I want to watch this. I want to listen to that. I want to download X, Y and Z. But you want to, now I think you want to do it in your, you want to do it in your own time. We're not limited now to this nine to five scenario. People want to do it in their own time. And I think that's, that's one of the significant changes that's happened. But also, I don't, as a buyer, I do not want to waste my time because I've got other things to do, but I do not want to waste my time talking to five or six different companies that, I, you know, I've had to give my email address and the, or my phone number or whatever, and they're wasting my time because they can't provide the service that I want. I actually want to narrow down my my search, and I should be able to do that through the content that's provided. Yeah, I mean, the, and the thing about that, the, the, big, the big thing about that is the... The fundamental error that we we've all done it. We've all made this error, you know. Including, you know, I've I've done the, you know, I've employed. I think forty people was the maximum I employed. But you know, we've recruited people, and the the logic and mentality was that it would go down a one to one sales process. Mm. So you get an inquiry, your salesperson goes out and looks to communicate one to one with that prospect. And there, there has been, until now, there has been and is had been nothing wrong with that. But it's different now. We, you, have the ability to sell one to many. Mm. You couldn't do it before. Now you can. So if you produce the content, produce the information, um, produce the podcasts, the videos, and we're not talking about 
big flashy corporate videos. We're talking about how to type videos. Meaningful videos, videos, videos Just, that people need. And, and, and the proof of the pudding is what's on YouTube. You can see what people watch and what, who, what and how they engage with what's on there and with live, stri live streaming. So a, a business's requirement now nowadays is you want to be able to sell one to many. In order to do that, you make a point of creating this content that's freely available and referenceable on Google, which means it increases your exposure. You make it available and to the point of enabling prospects to buy without speaking to anyone. You might, and some people will go, oh, we could, we could never do that because, okay, well think, think about the reason you're saying because, and now you work towards adapting your business to accommodate that. that, that that's what this is about. It, it may well be that you, you, you absolutely refuse to do it. And, and I'm talking about it's a personal choice. You refuse to do it. But if you can go and buy 150 grand Tesla online, you can, you can, you can just as well sell your product. Mm. I think it's, and, and it is uh, to be honest, I think it is the reality of, of where we are going. And I think it is very naive and very, very short sighted to think that we can, can continue with the same sales and marketing models that we used two, three years ago. I think it's like saying, you know, go out and knock on doors. That is exactly the same, you know, yeah, go, out, go out and knock on doors, go to business parks, knock on business doors. You know, what are the chances of reaching somebody in an office no. now? <laughs> but, but I think it's exactly the same mentality. And I, I think if you, you want to continue down that route, I think the only way, you know, it's diminishing returns. Yeah. It was already getting to that point of diminishing returns, but the last two years have proven that, you know, businesses do continue to to grow and businesses do continue to sell their products, but we have to accept that things are changing. And if you don't move with the times, you'll get left behind. It's as simple as that. We talked before about the CMOs and the tenure of CMOs. I don't, I don't think I mentioned this about the three hundred and fifty grand one-off. I didn't, did I? No, you didn't. So, so just to, just to kind of fit, we're going to kind of wrap this up in a minute. But just to, I saw an advert, uh, a job description for a CMO, <laughs> and this is cash for this is money. This is UK. They were offering a three hundred and fifty grand one-off payment and three hundred and fifty grand a year for for a CMO. You think, well, yeah, you have to process that one. That's the first thing. The second one, it wasn't just one, it was multiples. The salaries that are being offered are pushing above 250 grand a year in certain roles. So, what does that say? That says to me that CEOs and private equity and different organizations can see that there's a problem. They don't know how to rectify it, but they think throwing money at it is going to work. Mm. Now, here's the kicker. What these people want are dyed in the wool, or if that's the word, the expression, um, full on experienced, multiple decade um, chief marketing officers that are going to flip their businesses. But trouble is, it was the decade old CMOs that were causing the problem in the first place. That's why we're in the problem in the in the situation that we are now, because of them. So chucking three hundred fifty grand a year at them ain't going to make any difference. Well, a bad strategy is a bad strategy whether you throw money at it or not. I, it's I, I, a, sorry, it's so as simple. It's as simple it. as that. I do. I do. Get, get a job. I can do that. If but, any, but anyone, that, anyone that sees boy, boys from the black stuff, that but, or that. But, or, but, wait, let me. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, you've got to walk in there and go, of course, I, of course I can do it. You want to pay me 700 grand in the first year? Of course I can do it. I just need a 10 million pound budget. Marketing budget. I, I, I'll knock it out. What do you want? Oh, you want me to do it with a less? Oh, well, <laughs> it, it, it's nonsense. Mm. Because it's so open to abuse. And who, who, who is qualified to recruit that person. 
If you're chucking 700 grand at someone, anybody can pitch up and blag it. Mm. Because the, the recruiter, the headhunter, they're not qualified. Absolutely not qualified. No. And nor are the people within the business because they're chucking out so much money. But I think it... I think it just sends a very loud and clear message that, you know, if we throw enough money, if we throw enough money at it, it'll work. No, no. It's like you know, it's like saying, okay, so you've got a car with, I don't know, it's got three wheels, and it's not a Robin Reliant. It's a you know, it's a proper car, <laughs> and it doesn't matter how much petrol you put in it that car's never gonna <laughs> that car's never gonna work because it's only got three wheels it's it's flawed i thought, I thought you were going to mention that robin reliant the one that I you got, pulled the handle off so, when it rolled so, over on the roundabout so, so I, i'm in enfield in, in in north north london and this robin reliant has gone round um this roundabout and it's rolled over and being the hero I stopped, I stopped my car and ran over and grabbed hold of the door handle to open the door. And I ripped the door, handle, I ripped the door handle off because it was five o'clock. And the guy got out the other side. <laughs> and then what did you do? <laughs> then didn't you push it up? And so oh, yeah. it, then it just it, right in it, just pushed it over. Pushed it over and carried on. <laughs> I think this handle is yours. <laughs> You know the thing. The thing about this is that it's it's not going away. It is absolutely not going away. And there's there's a couple of things. We'll finish off now um, because we've got. So I've I've got another podcast that um, has been recorded. And this this the next podcast is actually for CFOs. It's a really important part part to this or point to this that um, it's it's a financial issue. This is a big deal. The whole marketing thing is a massive deal, and it's going wrong. And I've done a podcast for um, CFOs and another one for CEOs to explain what can be done to put it right. Mm. It's not about and buy my software or buy our services. It's all there. It's written out. It's done. It's all laid out. New org charts, new strategies, absolutely everything. End to end. Yeah, it, you know, call us and, and get us involved and we'll make it happen quicker. But bearing in mind, you're marketing people and the people that are looking to generate new business have been looking at doing the same thing over and over again and they're failing so to do what i've done i mean i've been in business 35 years so it's going to take them a while to catch up so but the point is is that we've everything's on our website everything's there to everything's accessible there are downloads and videos and podcasts and live streams and articles there's everything there um, it would take you about a month, six weeks to read through and watch everything. But by the end of that, anybody that does that, they'll be a superstar. That is the bottom line. Mm. Um, but the, the, the main thing is, 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 is that there is light at the end of the tunnel. That's, that's what we're absolutely saying. And it's not about throwing stupid money after bad. No. You know, it, to do this, it, it, it's, it's just about um, understanding... If, for example, you had your time over again, you could start your business again. The way you would do it is you would make sure you knew who your market was and that the methodologies you had to attract them were working. And then you'd start the business. Instead, what's happened, businesses have started longer. Businesses that are longer in the tooth have started and gone through those processes. The world's changed. So now... It's about putting something in place that will take a little while to get set up, but it will gradually replace what you've got in, 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 in situ at the moment. And that's what this is about. It's recognising the problem, knowing what can be done to put it right, and setting a timescale to, to go and action it. So that's it. Yeah. So that's, um, well, that's a good night from me. <laughs> <laughs> I like the short one with glasses. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't got my glasses on at the moment. <laughs> But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, we're, we're, we've, we've got the, uh, another podcast going up tomorrow and um, we'll look to, to get this done on a more regular basis. And the, the challenge is, in a way, is, is, is we, we want to try and keep this fresh and, and that's the point. 
and you know we'll talk about the things that we come across and some of the points we come across because it's 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 common it's 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 becoming a more popular subject about the mm. the failures within marketing and and people are throwing their hands up going well we just don't know what to do yeah well fortunately we do so if you if you're okay with that check us out on the website and um we'll catch you all on the next one so bye for me bye bye